In this video, I'm gonna show you guys a quick overview of the Agri GPS CRG and just kind of the initial setup of the device. So when you purchase a CRG receiver, it will come in a bag full of a bunch of different items, um, some of which you do need and some of which you do not need. So you got the CRG itself, you got this little black antenna, which you will screw into the back of the receiver, and you have the cable, which plugs into the back of the receiver that plugs into the roof of your John Deere tractor. Now, when you plug that receiver into the tractor and you turn the key on, it might take it a minute it might take the display a minute to recognize the CRG and get the ISO bus page uploaded. But once it does, it will look something like this. So this is a Gen 4 monitor. So Gen 4 and Gen 5, you would click ISO bus VT on the bottom of the screen. Or you would go to menu, applications, and then click ISO bus VT here. If you're on a 1800, 2600, 2630, um, you would hit the bottom right hand corner menu and then an AgriGPS window will pop up. So this right here is the main page of the CRG. Um, shows your basic things like RTK state, position fix, latitude, longitude, bearing, speed, altitude, how many satellites you got, your cell connection strength, your GPS signal, your accuracy, and it has your HDOP and your VDOP down here, which is important for people who are doing stuff like tiling or elevation work. Now, you don't really have to worry, I mean, this is kind of your general overview um, typically you don't really ch do anything on the screen now we want to go to settings and let's first go to mount settings now I have a whole video on how to do TCM calibration but here is where you would name your machine profile um, put in your height fore and aft and do your TCM calibration now if we go down to GPS settings this is either a page where you'll need to do something or you won't Let's say you were running a 2630 monitor that only has an auto track SF1 activation on it. Now, now from out of the box, this receiver will not run RTK on an SF1 activation. But if we go to this mode simulation and we change all of these modes to SF1, now your 2630 from SF1 activation will receive RTK signal disguised as an SF1 signal. So it'll say SF1 in your signal spot right there, but in reality, it's actually an RTK signal. But if you're running, if you do have an RTK activation or you're running a Gen 4, Gen 5 display, just leave everything on auto and it will work just fine. Now, if we go to end trip settings, this is where you type in your information to get your RTK signal. So if you're using a cores network, you would type in your address, your port, and then the mount point that you want to use, and the username and password that you were provided, and then you'd hit save, and then it would try and to connect to that network. Now, like um, the address for the Minnesota cores network is like MN cores dot 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 state dot mn dot us i believe i'm not 100 sure about that and the port is 9000 and then i use the ag rtcm 32 is it underscore 32 or is it 32 i don't remember either one and then you would type in your username and password, hit save, and that is how you would get your RTK corrections. You can have up to five RTK profiles. So I live right in the Iowa, Minnesota border. So I got Minnesota cores, Iowa cores, my personal base station, and my tiling base station. Um, but most people just have one or two. Once you get your end trip typed in and you have a TCM calibration done, you should be good to go with RTK and it should work absolutely normally like a John Deere receiver would. And then if you need to set up um, like a precision planting monitor or like a tile plow or something to pull um, GPS from your CRG, you go to the serial NMEA settings and then you can select your baud rate and all your settings um, with the Hertz and stuff. So that's all there. Completely forgot to film that on the tractor the other day. So that's another, another thing on these receivers is that serial NMEA. But other than that, um, this button does firmware uploads. Now, 
I gotta redo my, I gotta make a new firmware uploading video because it just came out with a new software update that changes this process. So that'll be in another video. Thank you guys for watching.